Welcome back, Kingdom Living community, to Rise Up. And just a reminder that if you did not catch Riding the Storms on Sunday, you might want to back up because we are heading into part four of the Gold Refined by Fire series. This one will be ordering judgments and repentance. And so get your notebooks, get your pens, and get ready for that. And before we start, we'll give you the few reminders of things that are coming up to make sure that you've got them on your calendar already. And there are two events that are upcoming. Coming. So Reveal Report, uh, the Redemption Tour with George Iceman, of course, with Jesse and with Gary Wayne, author of the Genesis 6 Conspiracy, are going to be at the Reveal Report in Orlando, Florida, May 11th and 12th. It's going to be amazing. You'll have the, the, the usual where there's the Friday night show taping. Um, you'll have Q&A and all kinds of fun, and, and as they always are. And then after that, there will also be in Austin, Texas, the event beautifully adorned that is going to deal a lot with healing and so whether you have some, what you might term as lightweight emotional stuff, or if you're a survivor, this is going to be a wonderful event for you to really learn the tools and get the resources to walk out your healing and to get all of that just beautifully done. So you're completely free um, to enjoy the Lord completely. And um, another reminder is to keep watch on the Kingdom Living with Jesse website as the new course is going still we're still working on it but that's going to be up and ready to go pretty soon so you're going to want to see that because she just concluded the filming of rise of the righteous a couple weeks ago and so you're going to want to check it out and make sure that you that you get that and if you haven't already done the first set of courses the foundations of kingdom living make sure that you get that as well this is so economical my goodness folks should just give up their starbucks coffee thing that they you know, like, it's that's what i always compare things to i'm like this bible course over here is way less than your starbucks addiction so let's just call it for what it is and do a course you know and not any any course not even just your courses jesse it's like my goodness that coffee is expensive it is yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh so last week last week um on the third part of gold refined by fire um you were talking about walking in the fear of the lord and and showing how israel's really poor decisions and and continually moving away from god and 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 doing the exact opposite of what he asked them to do um had put them in position for for judgments um from the lord even though he would offer that opportunity to repent from that but they just kind of consistently made the wrong choice so that's kind of where you were last week and so with dealing with um ordering the judgments and repentance today connect those d dots between the two of what we're looking at yeah so you know we've talked about long term how we've been on you know we did a 40-day fast we uh were removing things removing impurities from our lives we we kind of just keep coming back to that place of seeking the lord because what happens is as you know as we deal with some of those strongholds we find out that they're you know they can have extended complications, uh, mm -hmm. things that may be connected that we have breezed over or that we really don't see as connected to that sin. So in this process, the Lord's kind of showing us how to think through, how to identify, how to continue to seek um, him so that we're not, you know, building up more altars after we've just walked through this whole process of destroying them. You know, we want to be a holy priesthood before the Lord. We want to be sons and daughters that rule and reign with him. And we want to be in that place where we're doing what's right and good in his sight and not walking according to our own ways. So, um, you know, that's really what this is about. And, um, you know, today's show is really going to be an offshoot of things that I'm teaching in the Rise of the Righteous. You know, how do we as we learn uh, to continue to walk in his ways and to rule and reign with him, how do, how do we walk in that place of authority? What does that authority look like? 
how do we put it into action? So, you know, I really break that down um, in the course, The Rise of the Righteous. And um, one of the things that we begin to learn about is the heavenly courts, um, you know, and we can do it the simple way. Uh, God provides many different ways that we can, you know, go about this ruling and reigning with him. The majority of my life, it's been a very simple process. You know, as a little child starting there, you know, I would just literally bring my petitions before the Lord. And, you know, as I got older, it kind of, I would just see this little, you know, vision every time I brought a request where, you know, I had this little scroll and I would walk up to his throne and I would say, okay, Lord, here's my request. Thank you. I know you're going to meet it. And that would be the end of it. But as I really begin to study and look into the ruling and the reigning and the authority, the Lord just kept saying to me, such a great authority I've given you. And, and with that authority comes something even more, you know, really it comes with a lot of obedience, which is that sign of love that we, we love the Lord when we obey him. So, you know, in that he started to show me his house and his courts and, and what governing that really look like, you know, it's so many things I just kind of put off or put past really, you know, there wasn't really any governing with it, you know, just like a little child, I would go, I would give it all to him and just kind of walk away. Um, but he's saying, you know, I've given you responsibility. I've given you the opportunity to step up and to show and to display the authority that I've given to you. So this is part of learning that display, you know, and in that, um, you know, the Lord said, it's far more than just petitions. The Lord said, you know, there's words that I want to release uh, with that. There's claims. Uh, he has so much that we can claim out of his kingdom uh, for here on earth. And yet not many will make a claim. And the Lord says, but there's things I want to give to you. And who's going to be responsible to receive those things that God wants to give? And with receiving, it means that there's a responsibility, a stewardship to give out. Now, the last thing any of us want to receive from the Lord are words of judgment. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest. We don't want to receive those words of judgment. Yet, when we are willing, the Lord will teach us exactly what to do with those words of judgment. He, he gives them so that there can be that opportunity to repent. Um, you know, it's kind of like Jonah. Jonah in scripture, he, the Lord gave him a word of judgment for Nineveh. Yet he mm -hmm. said, if I go, Lord, they're going to repent. So why even, you know, go and give the word of judgment, right? But what happened? Like when finally he obeyed, he got to witness. It wasn't just that the king turned or one or two people turned the entire nation turned to the Lord. So mass, you know, repentance. And that's what the Lord is saying that our obedience just, it's not a little thing. Like when we're picking up that, that mantle to rule and reign with him, you know, he plans to do mass miracles and so that's what we're, you know, fighting for. That's why we're, you know, we take the time, you know, it takes a lot of work to rule and reign with him. It's not, it's not an easy task. Um, you know, it means that we have to spend time in his presence. And as we receive words from him, we have to be faithful to follow through. Um, so that's what we're doing today. We're going to go back to, you know, the passage the Lord gave us in Hosea 10. Um, in that, you know, this is a passage of judgment and repentance. So, Jesse, the sound dropped out. So it went to, um, you were just saying Hosea 10, and now your sound is back. So if you can okay. pick it back up with Hosea 10. Yep. So we're uh, we're gonna go through Hosea ten. Oh, hold on. 
got some internet issues going on here. Can you, do you hear me I clearly? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So we're going to go back through Hosea 10 and uh, we're going to look at how do we order the judgments and the repentance. So the first thing is, you know, I write it up as actual court documents. Um, I have a, a journal that I keep uh, where I've been uh, putting those orders. Uh, one of the other things that may be helpful, you know, if you if it isn't helpful in written form, um, we had an individual who created these kind of invoice sheets. And these are a great idea um, in a way. I'll, I'll say, you know, I'm learning to, I'm trying it out. I'm testing it out. There's some things I like about it, some things I don't. Um, probably the only thing I don't is the quantity or the amount sections, but um, otherwise it's a really fun idea, you know, where um, you're basically giving the Lord a bill in that claim and uh, asking, you know, for it to be ordered. Um, so when I start with my orders, you know, I look at kind of what's the problem. So when I address the Lord, I'm going to bring the problem to his attention. So Tracy, if you would read uh, the problem that we find in verses uh, one through two. Hosea 10, one and two, Israel was spreading vine. He brought forth fruit for himself. As his fruit increased, he built more altars. As his land prospered, he adorned his sacred stones. Their heart is deceitful, and now they must bear their guilt. The Lord will demolish their altars and destroy their sacred stones. So I'm seeing that in what they were to have done, they're bringing forth the fruit for themselves. And as that fruit increased, they're building more altars, not into the Lord, et cetera. Yep. And their, their lands prospering, they're adorning the sacred stones. There's the specific heart issue. Uh, the heart is deceitful. And, you know, in that, the truth is, is that they are in sin against God. And, you know, the Lord has said he will demolish their altars and destroy their sacred stones. So, you know, that's the first word. Um, you know, you give out the word that the people are bearing fruit for themselves. The fruit's increasing. Uh, they're building altars. The land's prospering. And they're adorning their sacred stones. Lord, you have said you will demolish their altars and destroy their sacred stones. Um, so that that would just be the first order. That's kind of how I would write it out. Um, go ahead with verses three through four. Then they will say, we have no king because we did not revere the Lord. But even if we had a king, what could he do for us? They make many promises, take false oaths and make agreements. Therefore, lawsuits spring up like poisonous weeds in a plowed field. Yeah, so I literally would outline that, you know, issue two, Lord, um, because of their, you know, trying to uh, fulfill the promise in their own way. Um, you know, they're trying to raise up their own king. Uh, they're making promises, false oaths, agreements, lawsuits, and Lord, it's like poison in the land. Mm. It's affecting the land. Um, <clears throat> we can go a little farther. Uh, the people who live in Samaria, so those in the surrounding, because of that, it's affecting the surrounding nations. Uh, you know, they just care about their cow where it's going. They're mourning over their cow. The priests are idolatrous. Uh, they're rejoicing in the splendor of their idolatry. And uh, what is it? What does the Lord say in verse six? Um, their idols shall be carried off to Assyria 
It shall be a tribute for the king. Ephraim will be disgraced. Israel will be ashamed of its foreign alliances and Samaria's king will be destroyed and swept away. So literally write out the problem. Here's what's going on, Lord. And Lord, here's what your word says. Um, you know, we're ordering this judgment that as your word says, um, their idols will be carried off to foreign kings. Ephraim will be disgraced. Israel will be ashamed of its foreign alliances. Samaria's king will be destroyed and swept away like a twig on the surface of the waters. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and read uh, verse 8 through, um, let's see, uh, verse 10. The high places of wickedness will be destroyed. It is the sin of Israel. Thorns and thistles will grow up and cover their altars. Then they will say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. Since the days of Gibeah, you have sinned, Israel, and there you have remained. Will not war again overtake the evildoers in Gibeah? When I please, I will punish them. Nations will be gathered against them to put them in bonds for their double sin. Yep, so this is in fact, you know, from the things that we brought forward, this is now a second judgment that God is, the Lord's giving out. Um, you know, what does that consist of that we're gonna write out? You know, his orders, the Lord has declared, the high places of wickedness will be destroyed uh, because it is the sin of Israel. Uh, thorns and thistles will grow up and cover their altars. So their altars will be rendered uh, useless, unusable. Um, they will say to the mountains, cover us and to the hills fall on us. Um, it's interesting that with that, um, when their altars become unusable, their reaction is depression where they want to you know, basically suicidal ideation. Um, wow. But instead of them doing it themselves, they're saying to the mountains, fall on us. They're wanting disaster to happen. They're wanting death to come because they can't go have sex on their altars anymore. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Like as we give this judgment, um, who's reacting you know, we might get those reactions of depression, um, that spirit of depression that comes over. Um, you know, so if you're experiencing that, bring it to the Lord, uh, repent, uh, confess that and ask the Lord to, you know, rebuke and cast out that spirit of depression. Um, you know, and I feel like there's a little bit more there that I need to say. Because it's interesting with that reaction that um, as we're doing this order, that when righteousness is ordered, those who don't want to walk in righteousness will have that automatic backlash of woe is me, let me die, um, you know. So Lord, show us what to do with those people. We're just going to make an extra request. Lord, show us what to do with those who would rather die than confront their sin and be rid of it. Um, we ask for righteous judgment in that. We ask that you would teach us the righteous judgment in how to help govern those um, in our land, in our homes, in our community who may have that anti-reaction to righteousness being released. Um, so as we go further, um, you know, it says, since the days of Gibeah, you have sinned and there you remain. Will not war overtake the evildoers in Gibeah? When I please, I will punish them. Nations will be gathered against them to put them in bonds for their double sin. So, 
Um, you know, this is another judgment. Uh, the Lord says, you know, they've remained in the sin and war will overtake all those who are evildoers. Um, the Lord says he will punish them when he pleases. So that means that he's not going to specifically specify uh, when the judgment is going to break out. So this really should cause a lot of fear for those who want to walk in the Lord's ways. Um, you know, that if we continue to go our own way, um, all of a sudden that judgment is going to break out and it's not going to be what we want because it's going to, the Lord is going to judge us for a double sin. Um, you know, instead of just for one. So, you know, high consequences there. So, you know, Lord, we ask that you would move on the hearts of the people that um, they would be mindful of the punishment of a double sin, that we ask that we would not commit double sins, uh, that we would take every chance, every opportunity to confess and repent our, of our sins and to completely turn away from them. Uh, this goes into, if you want to read verse 11 then. Ephraim is a trained heifer that loves to thresh. So I will put a yoke on her fair neck. I will drive Ephraim, Judah must plow, and Jacob must break up the ground. Right. So this is, you know, again, this is the judgment of the Lord. Um, he now starts to turn to, um, you know, turn them towards that place of repentance. Um, he says Ephraim is like that trained heifer that loves to just thresh in the field, loves to just sit there and eat the grass, worship, you know, the other cows, <laughs> worship the cows. And, oh, uh, you know, there's a plot, there's a field that needs to have a harvest. There's work that needs to be done for the kingdom of God. So really this is, you know, discerning placement. Um, who's, who's where? Um, as priests, our job is to look out at the land. So let's say, you know, we're seeing things as they are right now. We're, we know the Lord's about to do this great work. Um, what do we need to do to know what the next step is? We need to be seeking him. So as we look out at these relationships that we have formed, um, who Who's just out frolicking in the field? <laughs> you know, who's spending all their time feasting, feeding themselves? Uh, they're not even coming in to meet to figure out what needs to be done. All right. So let's figure out, Lord, show us who are the Ephraims in our lives. Those that just chase the wind, but they don't listen to the voice of the Lord. Um, the Lord says he's going to put a yoke on them. Who orders the yoke? Okay, so as the Lord starts to show the Ephraims, order the yokes to be put upon their neck, that, that yoke of oppression. Because why do we do it? Because the Lord has already decreed it. He's, he's ordered it. Um, so, you know, in a way, we're just fulfilling his will. We're aligning with his will. The Lord says he will drive Ephraim. Uh, who are the Judas? He says the Judas must plow. So Lord, show us who the Judas are. Who are those who are supposed to be um, pulling that plow out onto the field? And he says, Jacob must break up the dry ground. Lord, who are the Jacobs who are meant to till that dry ground? And here's what's interesting. that, that Why is the ground dry? You know, we went through that at the beginning of this series, the refiner's fire. It's because there's a lack of the Holy Spirit moving among the people, right? So that's why the ground is dry. So Jacob's, you know, you really are meant to bring that flow of the Holy Spirit on the land and working with Judah, plow that ground, till it, the you know, 
let the Holy Spirit get flowing so that the people can, you know, sow righteousness. Um, so this is a work of righteousness. It takes it takes a body to do the whole work. So as we realize these places, you know, Lord, we're we're asking you to provide the Judas who will plow, the Jacobs who will break up that dry ground, who will allow the flow of the Holy Spirit to come in. Um, Lord, we're ordering the repentance, you know, those that would repent and turn back towards you to do your will, to do the work. Those who, and here we're in verse 12, those who will sow righteousness, um, who will reap the fruit of unfailing love, who will break up the unplowed ground, and who will take the time to seek the Lord until he comes and showers his righteousness. So, Lord, we're asking for that act of repentance. Um, you know, I feel like that that whole section there is a fast. So, you know, we're going to order the fast until next Sunday. Um, you know, pray, ask the Lord what you need to fast from. Uh, we've talked about how some fasts are, to, you know, abs abstaining from food, but how there's higher fasts where, you know, what does the Lord really want? he wants to achieve something greater than just abstaining from food here. What does he want? He wants righteousness. So this really is a fast for righteousness. And, you know, what is it we're to do? We're to seek the Lord until he showers his righteousness. So, you know, this fasting is a fast of seeking, um, which means we're going to have to, you know, that's what we're maybe whatever else the Lord's going to show us. What do we need to set aside? What do we need to abstain from so that we can seek the Lord until his righteousness comes? So we'll order that. So until next Sunday, um, I just encourage all of you uh spend time seeking the lord for his righteousness in your life in your community among the body of christ um here's some of the things that we can bring into that fast as we seek the lord um he says you've planted wickedness and you've reaped evil so let's seek and say, okay, Lord, where have we planted wickedness? Uh, what does that look like? Where have we reaped evil? He says, you've eaten the fruit of deception. What's the deception that we've bought into? Um, this goes back to those foreign marriages and, and relationships. Um, instead of, you know, having that right relationship with God, and being obedient to the Lord, where he, he told them, don't intermarry, don't marry into those who really do not walk in the power of my spirit. You know, they married, they, they didn't even like go for the half, <laughs> the halves, we'll say the halfsies, you know, like, it wasn't like, like, oh, these women posed to be um, Christians you know, maybe they had a little new agey stuff in there. You know, maybe they practice yoga and that was kind of iffy what, you know, because they were doing it with Christian music and, you know, and, and still go to church and show up for prayer. That, that would be a half C in this. Okay. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> like that. I mean, these women were witches who, you know, engaged in satanic ritual and they Drink married them and the priests of God married into those relationships. So look at that because, you know, you have those relationships where people will say, oh, I, you know, I, I serve the Lord, but yet what do they practice in their life? They're really engaged in witchcraft. And the Lord has said that there are those who claim to be doing his will but they're not. 
And we'll just call it straight out. The Lord has said it's the religious spirit. Mm -hmm. Those who are saying to people, this is what you have to do. This is what the Bible says. And they're pushing, um, you know, those things. But it's without the power of the Holy Spirit. They're not walking in God's will. They're not doing God's will or walking in his way. And they've eaten that fruit of deception. They've exchanged the work that God was doing for their own. Um, you know, they're even pulling out Bible verses for it. But the Lord's saying, that's not my work. He put it a hold on the work for a whole year because of those individuals who chose to walk out and follow that religious spirit. Yes. And now's the time the Lord has said, remove yourself from those foreign marriages, remove yourself, get yourself out of there. Um, it's already past the heavy rain season. Now's the time. Get out of there, because if you don't, it's going to be counted as a double sin against you. And the Lord will not allow you to participate in the great work that he's about to release. So. You know, this is kind of that last call. Um, you know, they've depended, you've depended on your own strength and on your many warriors. Mm. But yet the Lord says the roar of the battle will rise against your people. Your fortresses will be devastated just as in the day of Shelman uh, when Beth Arbel was devastated on the day of battle. Uh, when Mothers were dashed to the ground and their children. And the Lord said, so it will happen to you, Bethel. What was Bethel? Bethel was that place of idol worship where they left the cow, you know, where they, they raised up the cow, their idol, more than God as their king. And the Lord says, Here's a scary thing. You know, we talked about that there was actually no specific time given on the judgment. Um, yet, what is the very last sentence in this passage? It says, when the day dawns, the king of Israel will be completely destroyed. Yes. That king that they were hoping for, that, that promise that they wanted to be fulfilled, uh, that promise that they were seeking God and yet they tried to attain their own way uh, what does the Lord say will happen to that promise that it will be completely destroyed gone powerful stuff heavy words so you know write out the judgments um, you know again till Sunday we have a, a day of seeking the Lord um, that repentance, that righteousness, uh, seeking for the to root uh, to reap the fruit of unfailing love, seeking that the the unplowed ground will be broken up, and as we seek the Lord for that righteousness, you know what's at stake. It's not just us. It's not just a, the promise God has made to us. It's people around us. It's the land. Um, you know, it's the fact that the entire promise may be lost and not fulfilled um, if we don't walk in obedience to the Lord. So, um, you know, uh, judgments can be hard to deal with. Uh, the good news is where do we go from here? You know, we're trusting in that mercy, that grace. So till Sunday, we're seeking the Lord for that righteousness. Uh, we're seeking to root out anything, anything that's left. Ask the Lord to show you those high places. Ask him to show you any places that you've left unplowed where the Holy Spirit's not moving. Um, ask him to give you wisdom into this passage. Um, you know, as you seek him and seek his face. Um, so till next time but we'll uh let's say a prayer here lord i thank you thank you for the honor and the authority lord that you've called us to walk in your ways and to be accountable 
uh, for your word, for the judgments that you have going out, for the repentance that you send out upon the land. Lord, as your priests, as those who walk in your ways, we want to do what is right in your eyes. And sometimes it might be difficult, but we ask for that grace. Um, we ask for grace and mercy as we are learning to do this job. Lord, we, you know, you know how imperfect mm -hmm. we are. Uh, you are in that process of sanctifying us and making us holy. So, Lord, we ask that you would walk us, walk with us through this process, Lord. Show us um, how to be so in love with you that, um, that we hear your heart. We are quick to obey and we're quick to do what you show us to do. Um, so we ask that you would attune our ear to your, to your voice as we go through this. And uh, we ask for that, that breakthrough, Lord, that the promises would not be lost, that the miracles, the good works that you desire to do would not be lost. We ask that you would turn back from those judgments as we repent. And we want we don't want to just say we're sorry and then keep going in, in our sin, Lord. We truly want to walk in your way. And we ask for that. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. Amen. 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 All right. See you next Sunday. Mm -hmm.